All right. Well, thank you, everyone. So it is certainly my pleasure to be here at the AWS Community Day for MENA. Um, my name is, is Matt Foley, and I'm here to represent Advanced Micro Devices. And it is certainly our privilege and honor to, um, uh, to be a sponsor at this event. And my challenge today is to discuss something that is supposed to just work. So it's, it's more of a, uh, of a tool, a utilization, a way to utilize AWS and take advantage of some of the technologies that we bring to the table. But they're packaged in a way that is, I think, eminently familiar uh, to you all and uh, will help you with the, uh, the efficiency of your utilization of the AWS, uh, AWS cloud. So with that, um, just by way of introduction, who am I? So I am the director of the field application engineering staff for AMD. And uh, what that is, field application engineering is actually our term for solution architects or pre-sales engineers, as you may find in, in other segments of the IT industry. Uh, FAE is more of a more of a semiconductor term. And um, I've been, uh, been at AMD for most of the last two years. I joined in January of 2019. Prior to that, I spent 17 years in the system industry, so starting with Compaq through Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And before that, I was part of Texas Instruments is where I started my career. So my career is really bookended by uh, two semiconductor companies. And uh, I can say this has been a fantastic ride here, uh, here at AMD. And so I hope to convey some of that excitement uh, and interest to all of you because you're all technology consumers and you're all certainly interested in technology. And, and AMD definitely has an interesting story to tell. So I hope to, uh, to share that with you today. Today's agenda, first I'll introduce who we are and, and, and what we do. Um, and then beyond that, the relevant products here that, uh, that we offer in the, uh, in the cloud is Epic, it's our server processor. How do we bundle those into EC2 instances? What is the regional coverage that you should expect of those instances around the AWS infrastructure? Also some customer testimonials, use cases, and then in the end reference materials. And I think what you'll find from this is that all of the conclusions here are rather straightforward. And so I wanna make sure that you understand that. And, and from, a, from a usage perspective, from a cloud perspective, what we wanna do is wanna show one, compatibility. That's the key, key message. The second message is scalability as well. So compatibility and scalability. So not only will we support the workloads that you're used to supporting and that you need supported in these instance types, but that the behavior of those instance types is predictable. Um, as you use these instances within your uh, within your dynamic utilization of the AWS infrastructure. So, but first, who we are. So AMD is um, emphasizing high performance computing. So we have had an extended history. Uh, we are a 50 year old company. And uh, the, the story goes like this. Back in the late 60s, veterans of Fairchild Semiconductor created a startup cluster in Silicon Valley. There were about 12 companies there at the time. They were profiled in an article. They were called the Pioneers. Um, but the other name for them was also the Fair Children because of the, the reference to Fairchild Semiconductor. Of those 12 companies, only two remain independent uh, to this day. So AMD is one and Intel is the other. And the reason why I mention that is that we're often tied together due to our longstanding com competition with Intel in the processor industry. So we have been the we we have been the other major participant in the x86 ecosystem ever since IBM defined the uh, the, the home PC or the, uh, uh, the 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 desktop PC some 40 years ago. And so we've been competing in this back and forth ever since. It's a bit of a famous rivalry in the technology industry kind of a Hatfield and McCoy. Um, I've never worked at a company before that actually has fans and AMD has fans from gaming and everything else. So it's just an exciting and an interesting place. Um, and it certainly uh, certainly has a long standing history. And uh, what's going on now is AMD is in an incredible resurgence and the resurgence is due to the excellence of the products that have been produced over the last five or so years. So what happened was is that Back about 2015 or so, we introduced and, and really restarted the whole design process for the x86 cores. And so what this shows here, and this is just an example of client leadership. So basically we make x86 processors for both clients as well as servers. We're Intel's only major competitor in this market. 
And over the last three years, we've taken the leadership position in all sorts of areas. So if you go to Amazon's processors, uh, processor sheet and you're, you're one of those folks that likes to build your own computer, the do it yourself segment, we have about 80% of that market today. Uh, we're leading in notebooks, we're leading in desktops, we're leading in workstations. And so it's really been an incredible resurgence. And AMD was you know, struggling about five or six years ago. The stock price was maybe $2. Now it's about 75. And so as a result of the excellence in engineering, you can see that we're starting to get a lot of traction and a lot of acceptance and a lot of um, activity on our products in the client space. Naturally, next up is, of course, server. And so this is a picture here of the server processors that we produce. And the thing that I want to call your attention to is the picture there. You'll notice that it's a multi-chip module. So we have multiple dies in the same package. The reason why that's important is because in the semiconductor world, die size is everything. The bigger the die, the worse the yield, the worse the yield, the harder it is to manufacture and the more expensive it is. So the key from the perspective of a semiconductor company is we want to get this die, these, these chips as small as possible so that they are easier to build and easier to supply to the market. As a result of this innovative work of basically splitting up the chip instead of doing one die, we've been able to deliver literally twice the performance at half the cost of the, uh, of the competitor's products. And so this is the source here of the tremendous excitement that we've experienced in the industry, the way that we've been able to achieve a lot of high performance computing wins, significant amount of system designs. And in the cloud in particular, we've been able to support more systems, more virtual machines, more capability on fewer pieces of infrastructure than anyone else. So as a result, our acceptance in the cloud part of the market which, by the way, these large infrastructure companies buy roughly half of the server processors produced. Our acceptance in that part of the market is really due to the superior price performance that we offer. We offer superior performance at a lower price. The headline number when we announced the product was literally twice the performance at half the cost. And so you can see we've got significant core counts. We were the first ones to produce generate PCI Generation 4 in the I.O. subsystem as well and we have advanced security features we do offer in the clients as well as the servers the opportunity to use encryption while we're in use so we can fully encrypt the memory field of a system uh, while it's uh, while it's actually being used for for no performance penalty so it's an exciting time here and what we've found of course is that we've got significant wins frontier and el capitan those are the two first exascale systems that will be produced Frontier, when it's deployed at the end of next year, will have one and a half exaflops. El Capitan will have two exaflops or over two exaflops later. You can see the cloud instances growth. So we've had significant adoption in the cloud space at, at AWS as well as across the industry. And we're grateful for that. We're excited about that. And we're moving forward with that as well as, uh, as our systems and our processors become more prevalent uh, in this market. The enterprise platform part, for those of you who have a significant presence on premises, we actually have more system designs using AMD products now than we did 15 years ago when Opteron, the AMD Opteron was about 25% of the server market. So it's just an exciting time here. And I wanted to share that with you just to give you some context of you know, who we are and what we're doing, right? We're still at it. We're still at producing the, uh, the highest performance systems that we possibly can. We're winning awards for them. We're winning benchmarks. And we also win games. So not only do we have a CPU side where we're Intel's primary competitor, we're also NVIDIA's primary competitor in graphics. But enough about us and enough about AMD sort of as a company and as a history. What I really want to share with you today are the instances that we've built with AMD, with, uh, with AWS the EC2 instances. And the thing I want you to remember from this whole talk is literally the letter A. And you'll see that in a minute as to what we're, what we're doing here. But really just remember that. A stands for AMD, A stands for alternative. And um, with that, you'll find the secret here of basically adopting these instances without, uh, without any hassle whatsoever. So what we offer, so we offer cost efficient we call them cost efficient solutions, but what we offer, we offer alternatives to the existing instances that you're used to, the existing x86 instances that you're used to. So where you have an M5 instance today, that's an Intel based instance, there's an M5A, an R5 and R5A, T3, T3A, C5, C5A. 
The first three are actually implemented on the first generation Epic, which was codenamed Naples. Um, and the last one is implemented on the second generation, which is codenamed Rome. And the reason for that isn't so much that there's uh, isn't so much to talk about differences in performance. It's really to talk about differences in availability. So the first three instances are more available than the last one, simply because they're more established and they're older. And as AWS rolls out new pods across their infrastructure, um, they tend to do that. They, they those those instances had a head start. The other area to think about here when it comes to AMD and when it comes to these alternative instances is that we are a full fledged member of the x86 consortium. So x86 is, of course, the instruction set, uh, the, the most prevalent instruction set. And we contribute to that. And we also um, and we also implement it. And so when you're implementing a new processor from AMD, it's just as the same as if you were implementing a new processor from Intel. So it's really the difference is that the processor's new, not necessarily who it's from. And we've contributed to that ecosystem. So for those of you using 64-bit instructions, um, and that's everybody really, uh, the AMD 64-bit instruction extensions were the, were the ones that were put in there. And so this is a, a longstanding thing. It's a question that I get asked every now and then, you know, are you really compatible? And the answer, of course, is yes. And so what this means is that you can take your instances, you can use these without any performance uh, difference or performance degradation. You can use them uh, without any changes, without any changes to your code. They are x86 based virtual machines and they are designed to appear as exact replacements for the other instances that we're competing with. So with regards to the C5A and C5AD instances, and those are interesting in their own right. So these are powered by the second generation Epic processor. And that was the one that I showed you. That's the one that has the nine chip multi-chip module. Um, that's the one where, we're, where we've won uh, most of the high performance computing opportunities that, uh, that, are, that are out there where we're making our name. That's the one that's using the second generation core, the Zen 2 core. So that's really the, you know, the, the flagship product that, that we have at AMD. It's available now in 14 regions and, uh, or sorry, 14, yeah, 14 regions for C5A, six for C5AD, significant amount of, uh, of configurations. And this is where not only do we have the, the price advantage, so typically 10% off between AMD and Intel in instances, but these offer the leadership performance that we've come to be known for in the high performance computing space. And in fact, you can do high performance computing workloads on these instances as they roll out as well. And so this is just another exciting, exciting time and an exciting uh, opportunity here. And again, they fit within the structure that you're used to, right? They fit within, if you've defined something for a C5 instance, it will work on the C5A or the C5AD uh, instances just the same. So the way to use these is in a couple of cases. So one, there's the modernized use case where basically you take the older generation EC2 instances and you shift them over to the newer generation M5A, T3A, R5A, C5A. And again, the AMD instances are denoted with the A um, in, their, uh, in their name. And so you can see the savings is um, uh, pretty dramatic. So between 10 and 45%. So 10% is just what they are, right? That's the base, uh, that's the base price. From a 45% discount, that's specifically in Mumbai. Um, so instead of the Mumbai uh, infrastructure, they offer 45% discount between the Intel and AMD instances in that particular region. Um, so it's certainly a way to get the market started, but that's where the 45% number comes from. And then from the current generation as well, you can move M5, M5A, T3, T3A, R5, R5A, and C5, C5A. All of that fit within the uh, that fits within the uh, the CPU and the definitions that we have defined there. So the the other assumption and the underlying assumption here is that infrastructure for you all and infrastructure for for AWS users is really in some ways an afterthought, right? A lot of times you're defining a service as long as the service is working, as long as it's using the infrastructure effectively, then you move on to think about higher level and higher order problems, higher level services, different types of services from AWS, different activities for your business. And so what we've tried to do with these instances is we've tried to fit within that structure so that making a change is literally as simple as just adding an A, adding an A to the script, choosing the AMD instances when you get the opportunity to do so, 
And as a result of that, it will allow you to save money on your ECS2 services bill. And that money is something that you can apply elsewhere, either for more EC2 services or more services generally at AWS. From a regional perspective, we are now available in 19 to the 24 geographic regions around the world and 57 of the 76 availability zones around the world. And so this, again, is something that we've been working with for a long time. So AMD really re-entered the server market back in 2017. So we had entered the, uh, uh, the client market with the Zen Core a little before that. Server came later. And so we started essentially from a standing start in the server market with almost no market share. And now we're in double digit market share overall around the world. We're a little bit higher than that in the cloud space because it's easier for the large cloud vendors to adopt new technology. The enterprise takes a little bit longer to qualify all of their legacy applications. So fundamentally we're doing well and we're expanding aggressively around the world. And this is something that we've worked at for a long time at AMD is to encourage more and more customers to use these instances and then create demand for these instances and then work with the work with AWS and the cloud providers in order to get these instances stood up in the regions where they need to where they need to exist. And so that's what we've done. That's where we're uh, where we're going with this. So that's where we're available now. This is just another chart and you can see here where everything in green, the older instances are clearly available, you know, in most places. The newer instances are being rolled out awfully quickly. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, not only do we serve the the external facing things, there's also internal properties and internal activities that we work on as well. So we have just a lot of compute power and a lot of processors and a lot of processing power available for uh, for consumption here. And we're certainly happy to uh, happy to provide it. And so you can see here the C5 and the C5 AD instances, and these will again continue to roll out over time. So just in summary of the instances themselves, then I'll go into some of the usage of them as well and customer reference. So we have compute optimized instances, C5A, C5AD. Those are there, they're available. They're some of the highest performing instances that you can get anywhere and certainly encourage you to use them. That's the second generation Epic there. In general purpose and memory optimized, we have the M family and the T family and the R families. Uh, those are implemented on the first generation Epic and those are certainly available, maybe more available currently than the C5A and C5AD instances as those new instances get built out. From a spec sheet, speeds and feeds type of thing, you can see the sizes available, some of the workloads that we have thought and we have experienced on them. And you can see uh, from, this, uh, from this picture exactly how this is working. Now, one of the things I'll call your attention to is that as a challenger in a market, we have to assume that it's not our world. And so because of that, we have to be able to fit within the world that, uh, that already exists. And so one of the things to notice is the memory footprint. So 384, 768, those numbers are divisible by six. Now, in the Intel architecture, in the Skylake and Cascade Lake architecture, they have six memory channels. And so that's why the typical memory sizes were divisible by six is because you had an equivalent, equal amount of memory per channel. In, uh, in Epic, we actually have more memory bandwidth. We have eight channels instead of six. And so as a result, what we're doing is we're actually maybe sub-optimizing our own architecture in order to fit within, within the, uh, the structure that's available today. And the reason for doing that is so that you can have exactly equivalent structures between the two uh, uh, between the two variants, so that you can see exactly the uh, the same performance, exactly the same um, utilization, similar scaling, similar cost, all of that. We're trying to fit within the world that's been that's already been defined. But as we as we grow, as we get more prevalent, as we get more common, you should expect to see you know, more adoption of eight memory channel, uh, eight memory channel optimized configurations. I would expect that certainly in the HPC world. So, but anyway, the, the point of, of mentioning that, the point of bringing that forward is that we're making every effort possible here, again, to, to make it as easy as possible to adopt these instances. So it is really a no brainer in terms of switching from one instance type to another. And it's just noticing the difference, not in the performance, not in the scalability, not in any of the technical details, but actually noticing the difference in your bill, noticing the difference in the uh, in the EC2 charges. 
So from a customer perspective here, this is one of the things that's interesting about a topic that is so important as, as saving, saving money, but yet so simple because these are really direct replacements and equivalents of existing, uh, existing products that are already defined. The customer testimonials don't need to be a book. You know, they don't need to be a long saga and story of how to, uh, how to adopt these instances. Fundamentally, they just need to be results. And so for the first case, you can see it's an enterprise software vendor discovered what they said were substantial savings on their cloud costs. Um, the gaming company, which is a, a, a gaming studio, and AMD has quite an affinity for gaming anyway. So we, we sponsor eSports teams, for example. Uh, we compete aggressively uh, in that arena. We do um, uh, launch, launch events with, uh, with game studios when they release new games. We're actually, um, uh, we publicly announced that we're supporting and that we're the, uh, uh, we're the ASICs behind what you can get from, the, um, uh, from some of the game consoles out there. So anyway, it's an exciting and interesting thing. It makes AMD a bit of a fun place to work as well with regards to all the gaming going on. But for game companies who operate in the cloud, and cloud gaming is becoming, of course, a significant market, they're finding the um, performance benefits and the pricing benefits of doing this as well. And it's also nice to see a fan of AMD. So we, we do have fans out there and it's always fun to, to engage with them. WeGo is another company, um, a travel company, has roots in the course in the Middle East and the MENA region, which is what we're talking to now. Um, and you can see they, they uh, went ahead and saved you know, significant savings, but also they have no code changes necessary. And that's what I want you to take from this, is that there really are no code changes necessary. If you're already using virtualized instances, if you're already using the Nitro platform, there should be no code changes required in order to make these instances work and in order to make these instances pay off for you in, the, um, uh, in your ecosystem and in your environment and in your, your services. So just a couple of other examples here. So this is MariaDB. One of the areas that we, um, uh, that we see, and this, this work was done on the R5A instance, which is the memory optimized instance. But in addition, just in databases, we do have um, a unique cache infrastructure, the third level cache in terms of you know, the, the actual memory closest to the processor cores inside of the chip. Uh, we have significantly more of that than our competitor does, and we also organize it differently. And by doing so, we are actually seeing significantly better database performance um, than we otherwise would to take advantage of that. So you should see that, especially in the C5A instances. But the point of this slide and the point of this discussion is to show you that we have this linear performance or the linear scaling performance so that you can get an idea of the type of performance that you should expect because this is one of those keys to, to really you know, for us as, as somebody coming into this, uh, this space and supplying the as a service market, we're coming from a heritage of an IT that was different, right? So the IT on premise, normally you size the installation for as big as you need it and then deploy it and then revisit it in a few years. Of course, with, the, uh, with, with AWS's usage model and the usage model really pioneered by, by this work, everything is dynamic. And so as a result, performance predictions are far more important than they were in the, in, the older, in the older era. And so by doing this, what we're showing here is that the performance that we offer on these instances is similarly predictable to the performance that you would expect um, on, the, uh, on the other, um, uh, on the competing instances. And so by doing that, it allows you to better predict when you, the, the amount of instances you'll need to scale up as well as predict the amount of instances you'll need at a particular load at a particular time. So that's not only true here for MariaDB, also true for the spin up times on, uh, on the Kubernetes clusters. Um, and this stuff, uh, this is important. And we've got significant amount of material uh, working with AWS in terms of providing all of the, um, all of the, this kind of technical background or this type of characterization really is probably the better term of characterization of how these workloads perform on these instances and how we're able to really provide the same experience for, for lower cost and how you're able to take advantage of the diversity um, that's within the infrastructure, within the ecosystem uh, to your benefit. And so this is just there a, a short listing. There's plenty more out there available on our um, uh, uh, solution briefs that are available um, on our implementation guide on our website in order to talk about 
the uh, the different types of workloads that have been characterized on the uh, on the epic based instances and of course the the easiest thing here is the the nice part for me with with regards to this is that it's so easy to do a proof of concept in a cloud it's so easy to do a proof of concept in in aws so where i'm coming from and the, the types of uh, the types of business that we conduct here without uh, you know outside of the clouds you know a customer wants to test the system okay we work with one of our partners to go get them a system to go test the system and then we have calls with them and discuss all this sort of thing um you know how do we get the system who pays for the system i'll ship you the system if you give me the processors those kind of things ongoing and it, it makes it a bit more complicated and difficult whereas in the cloud the service is available it's there it's available to use um, it's easy to spin up it's exactly the same structure that you're used to and our uh, our request and our hope and and certainly our uh, our wish is is that you give it a chance you know that you go ahead and try to add the a to these these instance types um, and enjoy enjoy the savings that we bring enjoy the performance that, that we also have and uh, really enjoy the uh, enjoy the technology and and take advantage of the technology choice that we offer so with that, I don't really have much much more. It's tough to sometimes make a 30-minute presentation out of a rather relatively straightforward topic. But nonetheless, I just wanted to thank you all for the opportunity to be here. It's certainly our honor to sponsor this event. And uh, we look forward to working with uh, with each and every one of you and supplying you with the kind of, uh, kind of efficiency gains uh, that you deserve on the AWS infrastructure in EC2. So thank you.